Fly me to the moon Let me play among the stars Welcome back, everybody. Today, we begin the long-awaited Part 6 of the Moonbase series, and we start right in the action with the first part that is going to be our addition for this um, episode, and it is a comms tower, if it's not clear from the few snippets you get of video. Um, the small comms array that was originally built on top of the base uh, no longer cuts it for the base's um, expanded form and the new needs, especially with the need for communication with the rover. Of course, this is all imaginary or hypothetical or whatever you want to call it because comms aren't actually implemented or anything like that. But, uh, you know, it's designed to look cool. Uh, it has four antennas, four dishes, and it's RTG powered. Um, but of course, everything on the base is designed to look cool because there's actually no function. It's just to say that, oh, look at me, I have a base on the moon. And as we come down closer to the moon base, um, the lag becomes more apparent because the moon base, as it grows larger and there are more parts in the same vicinity, uh, my computer hates me just a little bit more for every new part I add. And um, in this video, we're going to be adding quite a few parts. And you'll see at the end, the lag is um, it's becoming a problem. I'm trying to think of ways to fix it, but there really are no ways to fix it other than turning up the, um, uh, it's called Lagsbane, um, the, the original mod was called Lagsbane, but um, it basically just slows down time rather than have frame rate jumpiness. Um, but anyway, as we are just slowly making our way down to the, to the ground, because I do like slow, more realistic landings, um, and there we go. And I don't really like the location for this, um, so you'll see in a minute that I am going to uh, pick it up and drop it again. Yep, here we go, picking it up, and we're going to drop it again on the other side of the moon base. And uh, with the magic of video editing, we are here on the other side of the moon base. Um, and we're just going to drop it down here pretty slowly, realistically slowly to keep everything intact. All right. We turn off the RCS, and now that we're here, we want to get rid of this ugly, all these RCS ports and uh, the engines. So we throttle up and release everything, which is, you know, kind of dangerous and reckless, but whatever. It's better than deleting parts because it causes a bunch of explosions and all the uh, all little thrusters fly off into the distance. Surprisingly stable, actually. So fly off in a nice diamond formation. And uh, switch to one about here, and it's just spinning and spinning, coming coming back down to the ground. But the point was to get them going so they'll go off and explode somewhere else, because um, I really don't like going back and deleting all of the little pieces of debris, because it's a huge pain. One, two, thruster flying off that direction. And for some reason, it won't let me get back in um, to the other parts, so let me just get back here. And here we have the beautiful deployment of the tower. Uh, that is one good thing about action groups. It allows you to have really beautiful deployments like that. So, now we have a legitimate comms array. On the uh, on the base, so now we can communicate with ease uh, with whatever we need to communicate with, be it uh, Kerbin, the station, or the rover here. And that'll finish up for this edition. And the next part we're putting down is going to be a very large habitation module. 
Um, I have the first piece of it here in orbit. And uh, it it's going to be kind of a pain to get down there because I'm going to have to dock all the pieces in orbit and then um, have them fly down because I'm not having a repeat of uh, what I did last time with the docking on land. Yeah, that was, that was not fun. But um, I learned in this experience that it's almost not as fun to, uh, or it's, it's just as hard to do it this other way. And there we have docking. Now if you can see where the solar panels are, you can kind of start to see how this thing will look on the ground. Um, it looks somewhat similar to the, um, the habitation modules of the existing uh, of the existing base, but um, it is a little different considering they don't have a main tower to attach to, and uh, I realized that the thrusters, or it was just a tiny bit misaligned, and with with thrusters, if you misalign them by even the slightest amount, they will not work for you. They will send the craft flying all over the place, and it's, it's not a pretty sight. I actually had to um, uh, save scum a little bit and try to get the thing just right so that it wouldn't... Uh, when you turn on the thrusters, it wouldn't just flip out and fly all over the place. Um, and another hard thing with the uh, docking here is that I didn't include a lot of, uh, or, or at all, I actually didn't include any SAS. So I had to use a combination of abusing the time warp function, which uh, stops all rotation, which is quite nice, and uh, just manual correction, which is uh, a bit hard. But, uh, you know, it's kind of rewarding overcoming the challenges that you yourself put on yourself because you failed to design properly or whatever. of a rough docking here. And then I dumbly time accelerate, which uh, cancelled the docking for the moment. Um, and I decide that, eh, that's good enough. Straighten up and won't cause any major problems. And here we have the third and final piece that we have in vicinity and are ready to dock here. Um, I realize that I have not removed this extraneous and useless probe uh, body, so Aaron goes flying off. And target set, and then I will do the same to this piece. Uh, I just think it looks really cool with just that little probe body flying off and into the great unknown, or rather off into the great to-be-deleted box which uh, they do later, because I don't want a whole bunch of stupid, useless debris clogging up the area, especially um, with the problems I already have with lag and stuff like that. And now we have it docked, which took a lot longer than it should have, but um, I decided to not show that to you because it was long and quite boring. But uh, yeah, testing out the legs here, also to see whether or not the thing is crooked, um, but otherwise it looks uh, looks like it's ready to deploy and go down. It's cool to see all that machinery working together and operating at the exact same time. 
And here we have the large space train, as I came to call it for a little while, uh, beginning to accelerate and come on down to the moon base. Um, luckily we have quite a bit of RCS packed on this thing, so running out is not really a concern. Um, because running out of RCS with a probe controlled uh, spacecraft is pretty much the worst thing ever because probes have very 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 little torque um, and certainly nothing you can really do anything with unless your craft is minuscule and for a large craft like this this huge hulking monstrosity yeah it, they don't do anything the, the torque from the uh, they're actually they're actually like four uh, probes on this thing in total at the, this point um, and they would not be able to turn the thing at all. Uh, it's, I mean, it's uh, it's annoying, but I, I think it's balanced. I think it's fair as well. And uh, stupidly, I overshot. I, I underestimated. I overestimated the uh, force of the little poodle engine on this large stack of metal that is hurtling over a small rock orbiting the planet. So I just decided I don't need any more, and uh, I'm going to tilt this thing and use the massive amount of engines I have on here to get us turned around and headed back towards the moon base. Um, luckily, we have a lot of fuel with us, so we can correct for mistakes like this. And you can already start to see a little bit of lag just because of the huge size of the space train so imagine what it's going to be like once you get once we bring it within um, it's like 2.2 or 2.3 kilometers of of the actual moon base it's uh, it's not it's not very fun um, I particularly like this shot because it kind of just looks like I've been calling it a space train but it looks like a large train with rockets on the side just just flying around looks pretty cool. I like it. I'm pretty proud of this creation. Because it ended up working a lot better. Um, this is actually, what is this, like the second or third attempt I had to land this thing um, because in previous attempts it was misaligned, uh, or the thrusters were misaligned, it, was, it wasn't docked with the exact same rotation which caused a huge problem. Um, it came down, ready to land, and uh, the th one of the thrusters on the end, or, or one of the modules had been docked just a tiny bit rotated, and that caused a huge problem when you fired up the motors. They spun the thing around and around and around and making it impossible to control, and it, it crashed into the surface, sadly, killing no one because there's no one on board yet. Um, but we finally got the thing right. Now the thing works. We have pretty much perfect control over it for something this large um, and as I said controlled with probes without and not uh, manned parts but uh, there we go got the thing back on track heading right on down and stutter stutter oh oh computers working so hard yeah there you can see the moon base and lag has gone up significantly uh, but there's not really much I can do about it short of getting a new computer on, I can't really afford that right now. Um, yeah, I gotta say, I'm, I'm trying out a new style of video, um, instead of doing, or on this particular video, instead of doing live uh, commentary as playing the game, I'm doing this afterwards. Uh, what do you guys think? I mean, I feel like I can concentrate more on playing the game and doing doing well on it without having to think about what I'm saying at the same time or sounding like an idiot because I'm paying too much attention to the game. Um, so just let me know what you guys think. I I think it's it's working a little better, but I'm obviously I can't really critique my own work very well. It's up to you guys. <laughs> yeah, comment right on down. Amazing, just have to put a little bit of thrust in those thrusters to uh, to keep the thing from falling very quickly.
Um, I got a few suggestions in the past to put uh, peri perimeter lights on the base. Um, I was trying to do that in this video, but they ended up being really, really hard. So I might still do that. Uh, so keep an eye on that in the future. But anyway, here we go. And down. A little bit of a bumpy, kind of wormy looking landing. But I'm not quite close enough to where I actually want to be. And I deployed the solar panels um, in that little cut there because there's really no reason not to. They can't get jarred loose very easily and there's no atmosphere here to rip them off because on, uh, on Kerbin they come flying off uh, with a bit of a stiff breeze. Um, but luckily we have no atmosphere here. I'll come back down and uh, this is going to be its final position because I like the way it I like where it is here. Got it aligned well so that the panels all look nice. And any second now. Yep, there we go. Taking off all the thrusters, and I'm gonna have to go back in there and delete all of them, but it's not safe to have them go launching off and flying somewhere. Also, they're weighted so they twirl around a lot. Uh, but anyway, uh, that about does it for this episode. This is um, a lot of work. It's a, about a month later from where it was, and I apologize for that because uh, there are just a lot of issues. But um, I'm pretty proud of how it looks. Uh, so that's the episode, and I will see everybody later.